today is book launch day for Chris Hogan's new book, Every Day Millionaires. That's right, how ordinary people built extraordinary wealth and how you can too. If you haven't heard the story, our Ramsey Solutions and Chris Hogan, he's one of our Ramsey personalities, came together. We hired an outside research firm and we completed the largest study of millionaires ever done in North America. Over 10,000 of them. About half of them were people who knew of me and knew of this show and knew of the things we teach. About half of them never heard of me. And oddly enough, the statistical differences in those two groups was almost zero. So uh, we thought there might be some differences, but there weren't. Basically, the people that uh, knew me were doing the same stuff that the people didn't know me were doing to become millionaires. Because it is now believed in America that you can't get ahead by some of you, that you're stuck, and the only way to get it, only way to become wealthy is to inherit it. And there are people that say that every single day. And, well, the largest study ever done, airtight research of millionaires says that you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. 79% of millionaires that we studied received zero inheritance. 5% received less than $100,000. And most of the people that did receive an inheritance beyond that received it after they were already millionaires. So at least 84%, somewhere probably closer to 90% of millionaires did not become millionaires because of inherited money. That is simply a lie. We have the largest study ever done with airtight research. It's simply a lie. Well, you, you, you have to be people of privilege. No. Every color, every background, every sex, every region had about the same incidence of millionaires. About the same. Not exactly, but about the same. Well, you have to go to a prestigious school. That's how you become successful. Not according to this study. If you line up 10 millionaires, seven of them went to public colleges, state colleges. One of them went to a community college. One of them didn't go to college. And one of them went to a prestigious school. So the data says a prestigious school does not cause you to be successful. It must be other things. Financially successful, anyway, if you want to be a millionaire. A millionaire is someone with a million-dollar net worth. And uh, so Ivy League schools is not it. Inheriting it is not it. So what is it? 80% of the millionaires. See, these statistics are all 80 and 90% numbers. You don't find statistical analysis in research that is like that. Most of the time, it's 57%, and we call it, well, over half, you know. This is 80 freaking percent of these millionaires used their 401k. And they paid off their home in an average of 10.2 years. And so we find someone with a million two net worth with a $500,000 paid for house and $700,000 in their 401k and they're a millionaire. How'd they do that? They invested over time. Well, stock market rates of return have made them rich. You can say what you want about the stock market. You can say what you say want to say about mutual funds. You can say what you want to say about the fees and the 401ks. And you can go on and on and on and on and on and on about your freaking theories. But your theories are mythology. In actual fact, the people that become millionaires, the first stage of wealth, the first million to five million dollars of net worth, comes from investing in their 401k and good growth stock mutual funds over 15 to 20 years plus and paying off their home in 10.2 years. Oh, and by the way, they don't use any debt. They hate debt. Haven't carried consumer debt in an average of 20 years. No car payments, no credit card debt. They don't carry debt. They might have had a little debt early in their misspent youth, but they got rid of it and they figured out that debt was a robber. So it sounds a lot like the stuff we've been teaching. Patrick, who's a millionaire, says, I don't invest in single stocks. My investing has been in 401ks, Roth IRAs, and mutual funds and index funds. Joe, or Jose, says he's a millionaire, says, I drive a 10-year-old Mazda CX-9, has almost 200,000 miles on it. Of all the cars we purchased in the past 10 years, all have been used cars, and we purchase them in cash. Rich says, who's a millionaire, I didn't attend an Ivy League school. As far as I got, was two years in community college, and I owe a lot of that to my folks. They instilled in me to save, save, save. I don't owe money to anyone. 
And I think the biggest part is having a plan and sticking to the plan. Budgeting and smart investing. Here's the thing. 97% of the millionaires we interviewed, that's all of them, okay? 97%, that's all of them. When asked the question, are you in control of your own destiny, said yes. 54% of the general public said yes. So if you are one of those people who believes you're not in control of your destiny, the data points tell us that you're probably not going to be in control of your destiny. You're probably not going to be an everyday millionaire. That's what the data tells us. Belief and acting on the belief that it can be done and you have to take the hard steps to cause it to happen that I'm not going to get a good crop of corn if I don't plant some freaking corn, that you're going to reap what you sow. We live in a cause and effect world, that the American dream isn't dead. The belief of these things are what cause you to be an everyday millionaire. That's what Chris Hogan concluded in this book. You want to read all the statistics? The book is on sale now. Uh, we predict that this time next week we will be announcing a number one bestseller. Uh, I don't think there's any question. We've sold so many of them in pre-sale. It's unbelievable. So he's in New York today. He just finished up at Fox and Friends. We'll talk to him after the break, and uh, then we'll get to some of your calls. But this is important information. The, you know, the, my friend Tom Stanley did the book Millionaire Next Door 25 years ago and came to a lot of the same conclusions. They only studied 750 people, and one of the big arguments by the detractors was that the, was the, the sample size wasn't large enough. Now, those of you that know something about statistics know that Tom's sample size was large enough for it to be conclusive. But if you don't know anything about statistics, meaning you never took one of those classes, then you don't know that. So just in case, as a PR maneuver, we thought we want to do 10x what Tom did 25 years ago. We need at least 7,500. Well, we didn't stop. We took it all the way to 10,000 millionaires that we studied. And the conclusions are in the book. Everyday Millionaires, How Ordinary People Built Extraordinary Wealth and How You Can Too, by number one best-selling author, Chris Hogan. 